What's up, y'all? It's your boy Sense, and you are now back with another episode of Common Sense Reactions. I just want to remind y'all to hit like, comment, subscribe. If you fucking with the content, you know what I mean? No pressure. Um, today, we gonna get into a little bit of boxing ego once again. He gonna, he keep on going in on Terrence, man. And like, <laughs> I'm starting to feel like I need to defend this nigga at this point because it's a little bit crazy. You, it does feel like you're hating on him, brother. I'm not gonna lie to you. It does feel like you kind of have a chip on your shoulder. Like maybe you asked him for an interview and bro was like, nah. Like, you know what I mean? And you kind of took it to heart. You know what I'm saying? It's starting to feel a little bit. Like, you just, you're just you just well invested in seeing this man fail. You feel me? But it's cool. We're going to listen to him and see what he got to say. Uh, apparently, although of our eyes, it seemed like the show was sold out and it was a successful event. It wasn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna, we going to hear what he has to say. You feel me? In the words of Adam Sandler and Billy Madison, now you're all in big, big trouble. Terrence Crawford versus Madrimov, the fight that just took place, Riyadh season. Terrence Bud Crawford captured the victory over Madrimov. It is now said that the fight has lost at least $10 million trying to put on that card in Los Angeles, which means a flop. Let's talk about it. Now, Kevin Ioli, a box. Well, you sounded happy as hell about that, <laughs> Which means a flap. <laughs> you report a long time boxing and UFC guy. He had published a report. I've highlighted it for you guys, and the link will be in the description so you can check it in its entirety. But according to this new report that was published today, it is suggesting that Crawford versus Madrimo fight lost at least, not five, but ten million dollars. But wait. I he have to break it down like that. Not nah, five. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't go all the way up the scale like not nah, five, not six, not even eight, but ten. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's just really... I feel like, bro, sometimes I feel like the content creators been like bullied and kids and shit. And so it's like their chance to get back. I don't think Boxing Eagle's one of those dudes. For whatever reason, I just feel like he probably never had those issues. You know what I mean? Uh, but like, he, he definitely enjoys um, digging into certain people. There's more. And I highlighted this in yellow so you guys can see it, right? And it reads, scores of tickets, thousands of them. Oh, no. Let's get it. Let's get it all the way right. right. Boom. You never know. Scores of tickets. It's thousands of them were given away for the crop for majority weren't full. Tickets were way overpriced. It's not like there was a massive demand. The business failure Saturday on the list of failures to do the right thing. Oh, man. Hey, <laughs> why you gonna let Ego do you like this? Hey, you gotta do something, baby. But we not done. Something special. <laughs> the impressions kill me. Um, I I mean, when I the the news that was being reported about ticket sales didn't align with the crowd, and I immediately thought, I'm like, oh, okay. So what the hell happened? I'm like, all right, well, it would be bad publicity for there to be a bunch of empty seats, a bunch of empty rows. They probably gave some tickets away to celebrities to come to the match. Uh, Turkey got bread, so he probably dropped a million on a, a celebrity here and come through, you know, 
another celebrity here's another million just come through for the night have a have a good night you mean you already you're already down 10 million you might as well put another 10 on it you're a billionaire you know what i'm saying um just to make sure that your next event is uh, is more successful you feel me uh i feel like that's probably what happened if this is the case and and now he's saying they gave away thousands of tickets which is yeesh the Crawford Madrimov card in Los Angeles last week, the first Riyadh season event put on by the Saudis in the United States, likely lost more than $10 million. More than $10 million. More than... I don't know why this is... <laughs> don't slow it down, my guy. <laughs> You're a prick. You're a certified prick, fam. <laughs> Ten million dollars. Several sources. It says several, so multiple people are saying this. Several sources told KevinIoli.com the pay-per-view sales were negligible, meaning it didn't do any real traction. That show had its own set of issues, but there's little doubt signal theft that was significant. I mean, but I'm not even going to get into the... Is this like, bro, you, you got like a grade four reading level, man? What is going on? <laughs> the piracy stuff. Because the simple fact is every show, be it Canelo, Javante Davis, anybody in 2024 is likely affected by piracy. You know, that's just kind of common sense. So I am a contributor to this epidemic. I will, I will pay for it when I'm up, man. But yo, you gotta, you gotta give me some time. I can't, I can't do it right now. I'm sorry. Even the movie industry, you know, a brand new movie, Deadpool versus Wolverine, you know, will come out, and then people start trying to release cam qualities and different things of that. So, what does this mean? This means that your boy ego has been right. I continue to be right. The best in the business. And it's not even close. You guys are going to pay. I told you. You will pay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make y'all pay. I'm going to make y'all pay because I'll be on the front lines. Y'all know I don't do no capping. I get on here and just do my videos. Keep it real with you. However, there's a lot of people, a lot of content creation, if you will, content creators who are putting out information that just simply put is not true and that's the reality of it you have a lot of bogus bunk God damn i just got an email notification saying two arrested planning a terror event at a taylor swift concert jesus christ what the f content being created to kiss butt you know to push some kind of agenda or narrative and on my channel, I use my channel for good. You know, I do give my opinion. But at the end of the day, my opinions are always formed based on the intel and the data. I always survey the scene. You guys told me that Terrence Crawford in Riyadh season was the best card ever. That was cap. I watched the card from Andy Cruz up. I watched the fights. It, they're literally the top three fights. There were no knockdowns, no knockouts, right? In addition, bro, you don't need all of that in order to have a good fight. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, are you obsessed with violence? <laughs> like, the, the boxing is violent enough, brother. It's like about watching the skill level and the the chess play when there is chess play. If it's just brutal, um, brutal fist swinging there's no finesse to that bro and they had that too with the like the andy ruiz and all of that good stuff you know what i'm saying um but i didn't watch the rest of the fights but i watched from pitbull up you know what i mean which i think was the, only the last two fights yeah but um that fight with pitbull uh cruz and valenzuela was dope I don't know if the other fights were as good. I know there's some big names 
Um, but you, you can't say, oh, there was no fight, there was no knockdowns, there was no knockouts, uh, it was a terrible card. Like, shut up, bro. You had some of the fights with controversial endings. Some people think Madrimov won. I don't care if you agree to that. There's a lot of people that do believe it was a draw. Even Canelo said it was a draw or Madrimov should have retained his title, right? And then, of course, I think more flagrant would be the Andy Ruiz Jr. fight with Gerald Big Bay Miller. So two of the cards... I did say when I watched the fight, I wouldn't be upset with either of those guys winning. Like, you know, they both put in a lot of work. I don't think it was a robbery. I think you could have seen it either way. I think it could have gone Crawford's way. I think it could have gone Madrimal's way. You know what I mean? I don't have a problem with the the results. In the, you know, in the top three or whatever, had controversial endings with judge scorecards where there is some sort of controversy. Again, the top three fights, no knockdowns, no knockouts. And I think overall people expected more from maybe Pitbull, Rayo, and Ruiz said he hurt his hand and looked tired in the second round. So I think people expected more of banger fights, even the fight with Crawford and Madrimo. Now, me as a boxer fan, I could respect it. It was high-level work where you had two guys who are competent and neither wanted to make a mistake or show their hand too much. So the fight kind of played out like that, especially early where it was just like a cat and mouse game nobody really wanted to commit but back to Crawford's star power you guys told me that I was wrong remember when I made videos because Terrence Crawford he said that this fight is bigger than the Errol Spence fight <laughs> oh it that was the most ridiculous claim I have ever heard in my life um, nobody was talking about this fight like if you're I don't know if you're like, if it's like you got to be a real boxing fan to be, to have been into this fight, because I consider myself a casual. I consider myself a casual because I don't know all the details of boxing. Like, I don't know the punches. I can't tell you what's a check hook, what's a, a cross, or what's a straight. Like, you know what I mean? I know jab, uppercut, uh, a hook. You know what I'm saying? I think a cross is when you come across the lead hand that's what i believe like you know what i'm saying so like i'm not a detailed boxing fan but i love the sport i respect the art i had one boxing match in my entire life in my like two years ago so like super late 30s just to get it out of the way because it's like i was just it was just something i always wanted to do i ever since i was a kid i wanted to do boxing i was just not allowed to you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, my, my parents just wouldn't, like, invest in that for me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it would have been good for me. I feel like I would have been uh, pretty good at it because I, I did all right in my boxing match for a guy who never had a fight in his life. So, you know what I mean? Um, took some punishment. I was tough in there. You know what I mean? But um, so I feel like I would have been all right. But uh, I love boxing. You know what I'm saying? But... This fight was not something that anybody was asking for. You feel me? Um, so. It makes me laugh. I'm going to repeat that. Terrence Crawford said he believes this fight is bigger, right? And he started saying, oh, the promotion. I can't go anywhere without seeing Riyadh season flyers and billboards. And they had people walking around with signs. But... Like I said, before the fight. Terrence remind me of a bad basic bitch. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh so let, let, let's put it like this. All right? A real woman, woman that's on her shit, she not going to be impressed by, oh, yeah. Oh, he took me. I, and we went to, like, Red Lobster. And, like, you know, or like, fuck it. Fuck it. Let's say something actually fancy. Like, Ruth Chris. Or, like, you know what I mean? And, like a, a bad bitch going on, know what you got going on. Like, how can you elevate her? Like a real one, like a real woman is going to want to know how can you elevate her? How can she elevate you? How can you guys elevate each other? How can she help you grow in whatever you're doing? How can you help her grow in whatever she's doing? 
but a bad basic bitch, like a bitch that just looks good but ain't got shit going on upstairs. She just gonna be impressed by whatever. Oh, oh, he he took me to a, a rooftop dinner and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like that's important to all females, just so y'all know, like I'm not downing spending good money on your female if that's what you do and if that's what you want as a female you know what i'm saying but i'm just saying like terrence is like he just like i think because he's never been a celebrity for his entire career and now finally like in his mid to late 30s he's finally starting to get that attention that's like it's like it's like that's all he wants and he's just not focused on the business he like i keep on saying he keeps on making bad business decisions and he's making them based off of emotions like when he when he canceled the 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 why am i saying rerun i'm thinking rerun but you know what i mean when he was supposed to fight spence again and uh spence hinted at uh uh excuse for why he didn't do so well he was just like oh i'm done with that i'm not doing that no more very emotional like very feminine in the way that he deals with his uh you know his uh his feelings you know what i'm saying so it's just like eh, bro is you gonna have some problems because you're not making the right moves like you need people to show you how to make the right moves the people around you aren't adjusted to the business side of things enough to actually help you make intelligent decisions with, with your career you know what i'm saying that's how i feel it's just my opinion what does that matter if you're not going to do a bigger live gate than errol spence jr see this is what i'm saying terrence crawford back to the bad business bud bad business bud in the sense of your impression giving him a nickname like bad business but it's insane bro leave that man alone let him breathe ego just with your name on the side of a building you're impressed with human billboard signs and people walking around passing out flyers to your show and a bunch of goofy gimmick stuff but any real business is not concerned with that more so than they're concerned with the end all be all which is the bottom line and turkey you know if he's a billionaire or whatnot he has money to burn so maybe he doesn't care about the losing money i don't know i don't know his situation but this doesn't help the sport of boxing and again you're not going to confuse the public and make crawford into the star you want him to be by throwing money at it you know it's like bob arum this is just an analogy. It's like Bob Arum owning a car, right? Bob Arum dumped money into this vehicle, and then the upholstery was bad, so he got that reupholstered. The radio didn't work. He got that fixed. It was leaking, bad transmission, bad engine, paint job. You know, he... I'm gonna need you to come to your point real quick, brother, because this sounds crazy for you to make an analogy of Bob Arum owning a car, which is obviously metaphorical for Terrence Crawford. Bob, don't, like, yo, number one, I'm uncomfortable with the idea of a white man owning a black dude. I'm just out the gate. That's, that rubs me the wrong way. Secondly, these niggas don't own no, nobody. You have a business contract, an agreement to work together on a mutually beneficial basis. And if it's not mutually beneficial, then you should walk. But bro, Bob Arum is the reason why Terrence Crawford's career wasn't growing. Bob Arum does not promote or actually excel or elevate any of his black fighters. Which black fighter do you know that Bob Arum was in, ever involved in their career that actually grew into a superstar? None. You can't name me one, bro. Shakur had to leave. Terrence had to leave. Anybody who's ever dealt with Bob 
and was black had to leave because he doesn't care about his black fighters. He'll utilize them. He'll try and feed them to his machine of fighters that he actually wants on top, which are the Hispanic and white fighters like Loma and blah, 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 whatever. You feel me? But he don't really care about his black fighters, bro. He don't really promote them. Like, you're, Bob Aaron is good for getting your foot in the door. As soon as your contract's up, you better take your ass to PBC, bro. That nigga don't care about you. Get all these expenses where he had to, you know, invest and dump money into this car. And then the car still gave him problems and it still didn't run. So Bob Arum, you know, he moves on with... I'll say this too about Bob Arum. Bob Arum doesn't do shit. Like, all he does is pay, spend money. Bro is a horrendous promoter if that's what your friggin' job is. He doesn't promote his artists. He just spends a little bit of money and then he expects them to do all the work. Well, you know, he didn't, uh, you know, what can you do? He, he, he doesn't make posts. He doesn't, uh, that. that's your fucking job, bro. And yes, if you're the fighter, you should be involved in trying to make sure that your fight is as successful as possible, which is why I'm saying, like, Terrence has bad business. Like, he just has bad business. He doesn't understand how to build a fight. He doesn't understand how to build the anticipation. He just wants to be talented and fight. I understand that. As an artist, I understand um, just wanting to make music, just wanting to re record and be good at what you do. But that's not the, the climate anymore. And the artists that I manage, I let them know that. You, you, this is not the climate for that, bro. You can't just be dope. You got to make content. You got to let see, people see your personality. You got to let them into your life a little bit. That's unfortunately where we are. And if you don't want to do that, then get the fuck about the game because it's not going to work for you like how you think it will. Boxing is a little different. You know what I mean? Where it's like, all right, you could be super talented and then you'll make some money, but you're not going to ever make Spence money. You know, and, and Spence is so chill, bro. Spence is so laid back. Spence is just like, he's such a chill dude. So like, how did, is he figuring out how to make that work for him? And you are just, your personality is just so dry and pale that even you, you make Spence look exciting as, as a personality, bro. It's just, a, I don't know, man. I don't know. And he just says, you know what? This car is more headache than it's worth. And he sells the car. BLK Prime, PBC, you know, they have the car and they immediately sell the car. So Turkey Alashik gets the same vehicle that's been through the hands of PBC, BLK Prime, and the longest owner, which is, and I'm not saying that Bob Arum owns Crawford for the record. That's but, what I was saying. I was like, bro, that's, this is a horrible analogy. You went all the way down it. A, a atrocious road fam like you should have bust a u-turn as soon as you hit the fucking side street like you should have been like oh, oh let me get up off of here like you know what i'm saying like you doing too much bro i'm just making an analogy so the the person who was in possession of the car for the longest bob arum he already dumped money he already told you what it was bob arum boom you guys see it right there it says, Bob Arum, and we now know that he was right. Bob Arum on Terrence Crawford, we've lost money on every fight. This is what Bob Arum has been saying about Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, he's a terrific fighter, and I just can't make any money. Every. <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> Bro really does the world's greatest impressions, bro. He might have, like, a side hustle as, as a, like, I don't know, impressionist or something. He might be able to come up with a couple of dollars off of that as well. You know what I mean? Play Bob Arum in a cartoon or something. <laughs> Terrence Crawford. <laughs> I would, I, bro, Ego, if you see this, tell me, do you, like, just go into your room and just, like, practice this shit in the mirror? Like, I gotta know, bro, because, like, you... You're wild talented at that, bro. Like, literally, you should do something with that. Like, some type of, like, boxing cartoon, have somebody animate it. Now, I'm giving you too much game, bro. Every time 
that Crawford fights, it's a loss. My wife could have been in a hammock, and we lost money. Bro, this is what Bob Arum has been saying, and now they're telling you they were giving away tickets. <laughs> My wife could have been in a hammock. <laughs> Yo, what? A hammock? Which is exactly what Boxer Ego said, and now they're saying this deal lost more than $10 million. <laughs> I know y'all wanted Boxer Ego to be wrong, but not this time, Utah. So the proof is in the pudding. At first, people said Bob Arum was crazy. He was hating on Terrence Crawford. But the reality is some people resonate. Some people have that it factor, and others don't. And it appears the public is rejecting Terrence Crawford, not as a good fighter. You know what nobody talks about oh, when it comes to building a content this. creator business? That if you're not using anything e but this, bro, can I tell you right now? Like, this is too much, bro. Don't nobody want to see this. Hold on. Volume back. All those accolades, because he is that. He's a great fighter, great skill, great, you know, mentality as a boxer that does not necessarily translate to a star. Ryan Garcia, he's done a lot of stuff that we can't agree to. And me, I personally rebuke and reject. But I can't take away from Ryan Garcia, his generation. Audiences are into, you know, what fights he got going on and he got... A following. It's just what it is. So you don't have to like it. People want to confuse the message and believe because somebody is talented with skills that they happen to be the, you know, the goat when it comes to sales. These things are not really in relation to each other. Like, for example, you can work at your. I just wanted to give them a word there, and the word would be tangential. They aren't tangentially related. You can be as skilled as you want to be, uh, but it doesn't exactly, you know, translate over to sales if this is entertainment. You know, skills are not solely would pay the bills i'm sorry why i don't know why i felt like that it's just like you know my vocabulary has been expanding and like <laughs> it hasn't been expanding i've always had pretty good vocabulary but it's just like my brain has been dead for a long time and, <laughs> and it's finally coming back to life so i felt felt good about being able to give him a little word there man maybe maybe go over to boxing eagles page and say hey man sense said uh the word you were looking for at 11.30 is tangential. You know what I'm saying? Your job and really be smarter than your boss. And your boss doesn't know how to use the computer, but they making the big bucks. They making the big bucks at your job, and they don't even know simple processes that you know because you're a good worker and you took the time to learn them and stuff like that. And then they do whatever they do, making more than you, and that's just the reality of the world we live in. You know, maybe they kiss better butt than you or they had connections or they came in at a certain time or whatever. So you're stuck in this position making X amount of dollar, but then you're more knowledgeable than your manager. It's no different in boxing. You could have someone who has less skills or let's say is an influencer or something came from a different world. But if they resonate and it's clicking and they're putting on events and getting on the mic, you know, like Jake Paul, and then he could do a fight with whoever, Mike Tyson or Anderson Silva, Nate Diaz, and get people to talk, then, hey, it is what it is. Terrence Crawford, I told you, he's, he's a great fighter, but he's missing that dynamic. Now, the other thing is this. Turkey said that Crawford is a megastar, and he said the fight was a sellout. Boom. We got receipts on my channel. You never have to worry about it. We got receipts. He said before the fight, because there was a lot of commotion that the fight hadn't sold out. To everyone, and Timothy Bradley included, tickets for a Riyadh season card in L.A. are sold out! Exclamation point. Crawford is a true megastar and the number one pound for pound. 
very excited for the business opportunities ahead. So he literally tried. Wait, is this the same Saudi Arabian prince who like chopped up the fucking? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about that. I'm sorry, but he basically killed a reporter. I don't. I'm not saying this guy did because I'm asking. Um, but if you know, if this is the same dude who killed the reporter, the reporter who was reporting on all the horrendous things he's doing in his country and uh, chopped him up and they found the evidence and they didn't do sh about it because of Saudi Arabia, um, you know, let me know. I might have the wrong place. Maybe this guy's not even from Saudi Arabia. Maybe he's from, um, uh, what's that other one? where everybody goes and it's got they built, basically built the entire country from scratch it was just a big ass desert dubai yeah maybe it's from dubai i i might have it you know i might be having the wrong person but if this is the guy who murdered the reporter and america did nothing about it and now he's being allowed to do business in america that's absolutely insane to refute the notion that Crawford can't sell by saying and posting this and saying it was a sold out event, right? And the tickets were sold out and Crawford is a true megastar. But the funny thing is men lie, women lie, numbers don't. You could put these graphics out and try to confuse the public and say it's sold out. But I know people that were at the event and they have footage and there's sections, gaping holes in sections where it's closed off or it's blacked out. Um, I feel like you should either provide the footage or shut the fuck up because it sounds like you're just bitter. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not hating, brother. Like, if you got the footage, put it up. Why the hell wouldn't you? You always put up everything else. You just put up the little, you know what I mean? The little uh, article. I wouldn't make a claim like that. Like, there's gaping holes, gaping sections, and then not put up any footage. That's weird. Or there's no people sitting. So where is this alleged sellout in a soccer stadium? You see what I'm saying? So, again, this is what I said. You have others and content creators who put out notions that refuted what I'm saying. Like, oh, Crawford's a big star, or this event is a massive you know, big event, and Crawford sold it out. Okay, so explain how they lost $10 million. Explain why there's footage of people leaving. Explain how and why Eminem, the day of the fight, gave away free cards to his 42 million followers. Boom. I told you, I come with receipts. The boy Marshall. I show you Marshall. L.A. stands. Sign up for a chance to win free tickets to Eminem's performance live at the BMO. So he has 42 million, Marshall has 42, and he had a sign-up with a link, and they were just giving away tickets to people who would sign up. I know for a fact, because I also have in my possession, they sent an email, because initially they wanted, because they don't want the Eminem, you know, crowd nah 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 he's in his bag right now he's starting to cook i can tell by how he repositioned himself see that i know the guy and he got settled in his seat bro <laughs> bro i was about to cook let him cook to look sparse so initially the people a lot of people who got free tickets they told him that they can only be there for the eminem performance and then they would have to leave, right? So come watch an Eminem show, have the crowd look lit and full, full filled out. Then they received an email because they signed up through their email or whatever. And they were contacted saying, hey, you guys can stay for the, the main event and watch the Crawford Madrimo fight. So this is the definition of fake it till you make it. You have a fake crowd. Wow. Wow. Smart. Smart. Very smart. Smart marketing. Smart uh, cover your rear end situation. Uh, but 
you know, when you have people like this, then it's not so smart because then it gets put out and it's just kind of embarrassing, you know what I mean? I mean, whatever, bro. It's like, at least you had a chance to convert some fans, you know what I'm saying? Like, for real. Like, you might have people who would have never watched a Terrence Crawford fight in their life, never watched a Madrimov fight in their life, and now they're fans of both. They might go check his schedule and see what, whenever you got a fight now. Like, you know what I mean? So, he might have won a couple new fans. Oh, and this is another thing that I noticed in real time. If you notice for the amount of, just hear me out, for the amount of people that were in that building, I've been to fights that had less people than that, but you can't even hear yourself talk to your neighbor because with less people, it didn't matter because they were all true boxing fans, not this fake, like some people coming to see Eminem and literally there's some people that were coming to see Eminem. They don't even know who Crawford was. I seen the conversations, right? They were, they thought they were coming for a free Eminem show. So they're like, cool. And they're like, oh, we get to stay for a boxing match? I didn't even know. They don't know nothing about my dream off, and they didn't know nothing about Crawford. So, again, that's not <laughs> how you churn out and produce. <laughs> imagine, imagine a bunch of niggas sitting there watching you fight <laughs> that didn't even know you were fighting that night. <laughs> It's just like, yeah, oh, man, what the, what's going on back there? Jesus Christ, they're fighting? Did you see that ring before you walked in? <laughs> like, did they slide the ring out on a roller? <laughs> like, how did they get the ring there magically? Now, I watched it, so I know the ring was there the whole time. They kind of performed in a different section of the stadium, and then, like, the, I think the ring was there behind them and whatnot. <laughs> it's just all right, man. All right, but yeah, let me stop. Produce a star in America because these people they're not buying Crawford shirts, they're not supporting Crawford. They came to see Eminem or some boxing fans in LA. We're talking about LA, there's a big Latino and Mexican population in L.A., La Raza. So they might be coming to see Andy Ruiz. They might be coming to see El Rayo. They might be coming to see Pitbull Cruz, right? And Terrence Crawford was just almost like an addition. You know what I mean? Like, additionally, we get that. But this is what I said. They could have put Crawford as like the fourth fight down and put Pitbull versus Rayo, even though it, it would, the fight didn't really produce like I thought. But a lot of the fans were like probably Pitbull fans and others, right? Or just maybe the fan, boxing fans who they liked as many fights. So with Crawford, now they're saying the pay-per-views were negligible. So he did, again, he didn't do good on pay-per-view. They were giving away free tickets, confirmed. The crowd wasn't, you know, the crowd wasn't lit. And they're trying to convince you that Crawford is the it guy at age 37. I, I love it. I love it because I love my... I don't really like you hating on a man's age, bro. Like, at this point, um, what's it called? We're all getting up there, bro. And the fact that, you know, I know for a fact you're up there, brother. I can see it all in your face. So, you know, for you to be sitting down there and, like, it feels like throwing shade. Like, you're kind of throwing shade at the dude because he's 37, kind of saying his best years are behind him, kind of saying, like, it might be over for him soon type shit. Yeah, maybe I'm taking it personal because, like, I'm in a, you know, I'm on, I'm in a growth and a transition point in my life as well, in a very late uh, stage of my life, you know what I mean? But, um... I don't think my perspective changes the validity. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the fact that I might have some personal attachment to my perspective 
is completely irrelevant from the fact that I hold the perspective. Like I would hold that if I was anybody, hopefully, because I feel like that's the honorable perspective to hold. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we could look at examples of people who are still like, still probably fight worthy, and, uh, or not fight worthy, but just like still could get down with whatever they do in their older years. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, we got Mayweather. You know what I mean? Um, Snoop Dogg could pop up anywhere and rock a crowd, like have people going insane. Bro's almost like 60. You gotta be almost 60. You know what I mean? If he's not 60 already. You feel me? Um, so, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Don't, don't throw, that, throw shade at that man for being 37. I, um, you know, Crawford shouldn't listen to none of that, bro. Because if he takes care of himself like Floyd did, and he's like, you know, healthy and he's doing his thing. The only thing is you can't get in a lot of work in um, boxing per year. It's like max two, like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe three if you're a beast. At, this is where age might play a little bit of a role because at 37, I doubt you could do three fights a year, three high level fights a year. That's crazy. If you do, you're a beast. You know what I mean? And your body just built different. Like, you just built different. Like, you feel me? Um, he might be that beastly, bro. Because he's dedicated, he's disciplined, and he keeps himself uh, clean. As far as, like, you know, from what I understand, he's just kind of like uh, me with it when it comes to the not drinking, not smoking, not putting craziness into his body. I feel like you'd have to be or to stay in shape and stuff. He just went up to 154, so he was, he, was, he was comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Positioning, and I know what I've told you guys, and I know the information that I put out. Again, you could listen to Boxing Ego. I'm just the stupid YouTuber, but the stupid YouTuber gets it right yet again. Meanwhile, Terrence Crawford, again, was saying that this fight somehow was bigger than the Errol Spence fight. In what way? I'm sure they didn't have to comp and give out that many tickets for the Errol Spence fight because it was an undisputed fight. It was in Vegas where it actually made more sense, a tourist place. And you have a lot of boxing fans that they know Vegas for, you know, these big fight cards and historic fights. So I'm pretty sure they didn't have to do free raffles. They didn't have to, like, coax you in with, like, an Eminem concert to lure you in the front door or put Meg the Stallion or whoever, Drake, to try to lure you in. And <laughs> oh. oh. No, man. Bro, is just... you're out of pocket, fam. You're out of line. And you guys were giving props saying this was the best card and this made the most sense. And Crawford was like, oh, Riyadh season flyers are everywhere. Nobody cares about that if it doesn't generate a bigger buzz than the fight with Errol Spence, which is what you said. Also, no one cares about it when in the end, did this card really do anything positive for boxing? I'm, I'm saying no. Jared Anderson, top rank, was moving him just fine. People were saying he was the number one American prospect in the heavyweight division. Now he took a back seat because he got crushed by a much bigger Bacoli. So what did that fight positively do for Jared Anderson? The most you could say is he showed heart. But I don't really, I expect the fighter who's been fighting to show heart. So, I, you know, I don't really hold that in any higher regard than a journeyman who shows heart. Nah, there's, le there's levels to heart, bro. Everybody got some type of heart. Somebody puts your back to the wall and slaps you in the face. You, you're eventually going to do some type of self-defense. And then, you know, to the point where some people quit. And then there's a point where some people just keep going. You know what I'm saying? And so... They can't, you know what I'm saying? So, 
There's different levels to a heart game. You know what I mean? The heart is heart. You, you either got it or you don't. So that really hurt Jared Anderson's career. Andy Ruiz, he ain't been around for two years, and then he got a robbery draw and is a broken hand. So what did this do for Andy Ruiz? It did, he said he wanted to compete for a title again, right, and become a champion. But based on that performance, I mean, how, how are you going to look? And, how, like, why would anyone want that opportunity? This other Bacoli deserves a heavyweight title shot more than Ruiz because I thought he lost to... I just got paid six thousand dollars for my car crash from using this app on my phone, and I don't. Free game. Ads are insane. Gerald Big Baby Miller. Same thing with Pitbull. Pitbull was in conversations to potentially get a tank rematch, but I would imagine, based on how he looked and lost probably mostly all the rounds with El Rayo, he's probably out of the running for a rematch with Pitbull, and then. Yeah, Pitbull was never, uh... It was a scary fight to watch. Like, he, if he was, uh... If he was going for a Javante, he was just like, damn, bro. Like, clearly he's outmatched, but if he lands one of those bombs that he keeps on swinging over the top, like, it, it'll... It might be, it might be a long night for for my boy. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm trying to think of how to say it the right way so it doesn't sound like I'm discounting this guy's like skill level at any in any way. It's just like Tank is so much better than everybody he fights, brother. He makes everybody look basic um once you like understood his style when you see him fight like you understand what he's doing so there's people who might watch him maybe for the first time not really that much into boxing and they see him the first three rounds getting peppered with different shots and stuff like that and they don't understand what he's doing. Like I watch him fight and he has the same technique every single time. First three rounds, he's applying pressure, keeping a high guard and evaluating, seeing how you move here, seeing how you move there, what's your favorite punch. Like, you know, he's, you might tag him, you might shoot his head back a little bit and he's like, okay, okay, that's too far. And he's getting his distance, he's getting, like every, it's almost like, like they keep on saying this download thing. And so it's almost like corny to say it at this point, but he's like, that's literally what he's doing. He's just like downloading information gate. I feel like he does it until he has a natural sense of uh, distance, gauging the distance, like where he's like super comfortable with making sure you're out of range when he wants you out of range like understanding how you throw your punches, the timing of your punches, that type of stuff. And then he gets to work. But the, see, the thing is that while he's doing that and he's walking you down and he's applying pressure and tapping you with a hit punch here and tapping you with a punch there, the, you're feeling his power. You're feeling his power. You're becoming concerned about his power. He's still applying the pressure. While he's downloading the information, you might hit him with shots but they're like grazing or they don't affect them at all. Now your 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 fear is building. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. <laughs> After three, four rounds, this guy just keeps on coming and you don't seem to be able to keep him off of you. Or it's requiring so much energy to keep him off of you that you're like, bro, I'm gonna run out of gas. I'm gonna run out of the gas. This is the fifth round. He's still coming, brother. There's nothing I can do. I'm, I'm hitting him with what I can and trying to turn out, but it's not hurting him enough to stop him from stalking me. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah, that being said, uh, Pitbull did a great job. He's just um, it's levels to this shit, bro levels to this shit and, and 
I thought he was at a a higher level than Valenzuela. I didn't actually realize Valenzuela was that much of a good fighter. I've, I've been watching him since he was like nobody. Like you know, he was fighting on like tank undercards and stuff like that. Oh, he still is fighting on the, on tank undercards and stuff. Oh no, no, tank didn't fight that day. Anyhow. <sighs> Bottom line is, I've caught his fights from the beginning when he was just... I was about to say just fighting pure Mexicans, but like he... I feel like he had a fight with a black fighter. In that fight was a fight with a black right, Anyhow, my brain is going too many places. I should go in, onto YouTube or Google and Google it, but I don't feel like getting that in-depth into that. Um, anyhow, I want to wrap this video up, man. He has like seven minutes more of like just tearing Terrence Crawford up. And I've, I've been making a lot of commentary. So I'm sure that this video is probably 40 minutes by now. Uh, I'm going to try and keep them a little bit shorter. Get to the point. Get through these videos. But bro, the videos I've been picking be like 20 minutes long. So it's, it's nothing I can do about it, y'all. You know what I mean? You're either entertained or you're not. But if you are, make sure you hit like, comment, subscribe. And you already know what to do, man. Tap in again. Let's get it. Hit the bell icon.